Good evening, YouTube. You guys are not watching another segment of the Kali Effect. Today, I'm going to be playing Mermels with just a little less monsters. And I know you guys don't hear the normal things in the background, mainly because I wanted some room to talk, so I will be just playing my normal music. Um, my deep synopsis of Mermels. It, it, it's very interesting because Mermels are a very, very, very good deck. I can't stress how good Mermels are. Um, they provide adequate hands on almost every step of the way. Uh, it's just, I, it's just so many, so many things that we're going to be talking about on how, how good Mermels are. Um, I think the best thing about Mermels and the thing that keeps me attracted to this deck is that Mermels is probably one of the most skilled decks to play ever. Just completely. No matter when Title was at three and uh, Dragoons were at three and Diva was at three, no matter when you could OTK as fast as possible, Mermels were probably the most skilled competitive deck ever. I even put them past GOAT format, and I know I'm going to get a lot of people. <laughs> Shut up, people that say that. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is because not only do you have to deal with your opponent uh, doing a whole bunch of stupid trash, um, you also have to deal with other stipulations that just make this deck just, man, just so there, and it's practically a complete deck, it has everything you could need, and right down to the deck building, that's, that's what requires the skill um, to play this deck, what are you playing face down, just out of curiosity, I don't, I don't care about your back row, because I know it all, it's always active, but Oh, you're playing Doppel Warrior. That makes sense. Um, let's just hit you with 1800. And yes, as you guys can see, I didn't really draw a good hand, but I can play around it because this deck is just that good. Scapegoats, that's fine. Um, I mean, unless he goes Quasar or double Quasar, I might have an out to it. Yes. Uh. That's just what's so good about this deck. It has so many so many good things going for it, let's put it that way, um, if I knew that I was playing Junk Doppel, I probably, I would've went to Goyo and just stole his Doppel, because I know he's gonna summon Junk Synchron, good job, guy, anyways, um, this deck has so many possible solutions, like when I said in my video, Mermels probably have the broadest range of Synchros and XC plays, and that would really help when it boils down to deck building. Um, even still right now, I'm still playtesting certain cards in the extra deck, that's right, in the extra deck, not just the main deck, um, like Ghost Trick Alucard, who I've summoned a couple of times, um, a second target for Bahamut Shark, which not really necessarily needed, because more often than not, Bahamut Shark isn't your main play first. Um, and second, you don't, you just don't really need something like that in the deck. Um, he, this man is going off. So yeah, let's go ahead and chain that sphere. I'm gonna bring out. I was born to lead, not read. Um, I would, I would have loved to brought out Pike, but I felt like my hands just not there for it. And yes, I wish to use Lind's effect. Keep in mind, Lind will never miss timing. Um, we'll just summon lead, not read. And hope he doesn't have any other plays like Junk Synchron is what Junk Archer did hit for that massive amount of damage. Um, really, this deck is just so good, guys. So good. And people people don't give it enough um, credit because they feel, oh, it's a blah, blah, blah deck. Not true. Deck's just that good. It creates mismatches. Um, no matter what right now. I really don't want to give this guy anything. I could summon title uh, Go big eye big eye his junk <laughs> No homo um, I wish I had a way to summon something else or I can just summon aqua spirit uh, And go into the Bahamut shark play which doesn't really benefit me um, Oh wow monsters you control this destroyed by battle. So he still gets it from tokens uh, like right now, I even I have to think. I like that when I play a deck. So we're just gonna go battle, and we're gonna attack into his junk berserker. I don't really want that on the field at all. Draw your card. Uh, main phase two. Ah oh, man. Um, I'm gonna normal summon her. I'm gonna use her effect. We're gonna morph him into a level three monster and a level four monster, respectively. So, Hild. 
and yes, we'll morph her into another thing, which would be Pike. I think I'm liking the higher uh, monster base uh, for this deck. Next, we're going to special summon Aqua Spirit by banishing Gen X Undone. And then we're going to go into one of the deck's most famous plays, which first is the Bahamut Shark. Actually, I probably should have exited on it. And nah, nah, that's not worth it. And then Mequipped Anganeer. Um, Bahamut Shark's effect. Now I have to make sure I don't send the Hild until the time is right. I want to send the Hild at the perfect time. When I have a Mermel in the hand to use. But that should practically set us up when it comes to monsters. Um, I don't know exactly what he's going to do next. But hopefully it's not enough. I hate that card. I hate that card Supply Squad. Just because he can do so much. You know, he, he can just do so much with the card. Whatever he attacks into, he's going to run into. Um, man, he's drawing two cards per... Oh, I hate this card. Uh-oh. Okay, what am I missing? I have one, two, three, four. I need one more to grave? Hmm. That's interesting. Molly will drop him down to two, so I guess it'll be safe to go in. That's not bad. Um, I could just activate Bahamut Shark's effect and then drop it. I think I'll do that. I'll activate Bahamut Shark's effect. Oh, looks like I found why I would use Triage Levia. I was just talking about how it's not needed, and now I'm using it. Now we'll go into Molin Glacia. Discard two cards from his hand. Okay, and you can have those back after I'm done. Oh, wait, he's going to have more. Oh, no, it's only once per turn. It's only once per turn. Sweet. I forgot that it's only once per turn. Sweet. Go ahead. That's fine, I guess. Um, maybe I should have did this different. I should have destroyed the tokens a long time ago, because I keep forgetting it's only once per turn. But it's all well. Um, I guess, I'll, like I said, I'll give him his cards back. Um, and then we'll just hit for some major damage. Main phase two, I'll set the Forbidden Lance. And it's back to you. Level Eater is gone uh, because of Triage Levia. God, I love you already. You've already put in a little work that I'd like. Um, and I'm assuming he's going to try to make even bigger play. Which is perfectly fine. The only drawback about Millen Glacier is that I don't like that. You know, obviously, if he leaves the field, you can't attack. Which is a bummer. So, you really, when you drop Millen Glacia, you have to win the game within the next couple of turns. Because um, that not being able to attack could come, could, not always, could come back to bite you in the ass. Like what this man's about to do. If he goes into Junk Archer and then removes my Mullen Glacier from play, I'm pretty sure it says when his card leaves the field. I won't be able to attack permanently, <laughs> which would suck. When his card, blah, blah, blah. When this card, blah, blah, blah. If this card leaves the field, yeah. If he goes, I, the smart play will be going to Junk Archer, banish my Mullen Glacier, I won't be able to attack. But I don't think a lot of people read the card text of Mullen Glacier. And it's nothing I can do about that. Oh, no, he passed his turn. All right, I'm going for game. <laughs> it was nothing else much to be said. Um, this was a really, when I say really, this wasn't a great hand. This was a pretty bad hand that I've obviously made into that. I've actually even dropped Docker Spirits down to two. I was running three at a point in time. Was just going over the deck. I was like, why am I running all this shit? But then didn't know what to replace it with. I want to try it with more back row, just to try it, because I don't, personally, I don't like the back row versions, but they seem to uh, have pop over over Artifact Trap Tricks hands, and that is your hardest matchup, just straight up, there's nothing much you can do about it, um, they say, no, you can't destroy cards, and blah, 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 the only thing that I'm banking on is that uh, Shadows come out, and people start picking up Shadows over Hat, because that that's almost obvious, it's the newer card, um, Mermel is... If you like, if you like combo decks that require thought, that are consistent and just really good, then you'll like Mermels because, like I said, Mermels is probably the tier one combo deck of all time. Uh, oh, that's 
That's an okay hand. You know, I'm not liking drawing Lance all the time. I think I'm gonna cut it down to two again. Uh oh. Hmm. This is this proposes an interesting. Uh, you know what? I, I'm gonna go against my cardinal rule for this one time only. I'm gonna send dragoons. Okay. Now I know what we're playing against. Uh, that's fine. So his face down is hamstrung. I wish you were elite or uh, megalo. Nah, I still wouldn't do it. Uh, why did I do that? What was I thinking? I don't know. What was I thinking? Oh, that I can summon twice in one turn. Okay, makes sense, Cali effect. Oh well. So um, sometimes you'll be punished. You'll almost every single time you'll be punished for for like dumb tricks, really retarded mistakes. So it, it's whatever most of the time. Um, he's he's playing Mecha Fan of Beast. Hopefully, I, I'm I, since I played against the deck, I know I'm gonna have to steamroll him before he gets into his combos and stuff. <laughs> it's no problem. Flip your hamstrap. Uh, hamstrap's gonna get him two more tokens. There's no more tokens. There's no mecha fan of beast monsters in the graveyard, so I should not be worried. Okay, now maybe this is a. Uh, this might get a little uncomfortable. Oh, so he's gonna clog his fiddle. Is he actually playing mecha fan of beast? Maybe he's playing. Okay, good. Because he was a bad Mecha Phantom Beast player. I mean, I don't really expect people to be good Mecha Phantom Beast players, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I expect them all, most for the majority, to be bad because they don't know how the deck necessarily runs. Um, that being said, what was I talking about about Mono? Just a really fun deck to play. This deck is known. Uh, you have two. You have two ways to play this deck. It's control, and then you can put your opponent in situations, or you you can OTK them because if they leave themselves blind, like just open in the air, uh, you can OTK them. And more than likely, if you see that opportunity, you will seize it to OTK them. That's perfectly fine. I don't like decks that tag that that rely on OTKs. But if my opponent is wide open and they decide to play like an idiot for like two turns or maybe even one turn i would like the ability to otk him and that's what this deck can do um secondly if if your opponent's playing a bad deck mermels will expose them if they're playing something gimmicky mermels will expose them i think the only thing the only floodgate cards that this deck genuinely loses to is vanity's emptiness macro vanity's emptiness and macro because kaiser Kalazim it's hard to play. I mean, it's a hard card, but it's not that hard to play around. Um, what else? There's a couple other floodgate cards that I can't think of, they, but they're they're not as hard to play around. Like I was saying, um, this is why I wish I had Gores, because this would have been perfect. <sighs> that would have been perfect. Okay. Uh, title in hand. Or title and grave. Uh, maybe I should have set the wind. Maybe maybe I wasn't thinking correctly. Um, hmm. This is extremely interesting. Okay, leads effect is gonna be very stupid. Um, undying to send dragoons. I don't like that either. I don't like targeting his monster because that's not gonna lead into something really fun. Um, I do have title and graveyard. Let's go with the ladder. I activate Undyne Effect. Undyne Effect sends Dragoons. Dragoon add Mega. Mega Effect. I'm gonna you and you. Uh, okay, I'm going to target this one. I know its effect is going to activate. I really don't care. As long as he doesn't hit the Lin, I'm perfectly fine. Oh, wait. 
Oh wait, no, doesn't he get the look? Ah, crap. Oh well. Pretty sure he gets the look, which he'll... He sent the wrong card. Um, okay. I think I can deal with that. I can deal without a pike in my hand. And we'll attack for 600. Maybe he has a Typhoon face down, and that's why he anticipated it. I know he's playing... I know what he's playing. I don't know why I didn't use title and just summon himself. But, view, and where's the other one? Did I draw one? Oh, didn't notice. You and you. And we'll make Gaios. Oh no, it's on Phil. Durr. Gaios with a phase down. Oh, it's a Typhoon. It's definitely a Typhoon. That's why. Oh, no. Maybe. I don't know what it is. Lead's already engraved. Megalo's already activated. See, that's why I like running two Megalo. That's fine. Summon him again. He can't attack. It's perfectly fine with me right now. It's going to Typhoon it now. Sure, I'm going to activate it. I don't think... I don't think he's uh, an astute player. We're gonna summon Lind. Yes, I wish to use Lind's effect. I guess Lind. Lind can't give me anything. This is why I wish I played Megalo, because I don't want to summon him. Or another Megalo, I'm sorry. Lind's gonna give me TSC defense, I guess. I don't want to do anything else. He's gonna have two back row, and he can't attack. I drew another sphere. So I, I can target this guy without targeting him. Whoa. Well, I don't care about targeting him, actually. If you want to be my lover, first you must be my friend. Draco side targets. And I can go second and gate it. Oh. First, we activate by negating his effect from title. And then we activate Title's effect. I'll banish you and you. Do you have a response? Royal Decree. That's fine. Thank you for letting me know that my sphere is now useless and you don't play back row. Um, now I think I might snatch it, bitch. I think I'm going to snatch it. I think that I think that's the optimal play anyways. Keeps you from, you know, keep reusing it and putting it in the graveyard and stuff. It keeps me happy too. Cause this is game. Uh what you don't play. Oh yeah, you probably have a book of moon. Alright, good. I was like, you probably have a book of moon. But other than that, I don't see anything. Oh, fell short of GG. What do you want me to go into? Oh, the clip thing in there and try it, Levia. Um, go ahead. Regardless, it's unless he draws Dark Hold, summon a monster from your deck card or back to work. But then I'm just gonna big eye it. So, that's no bueno. Just gonna make room and then big eye it. Nothing much else he can do. Um, that being said, that was uh, that was just some interesting games by Mermel. Um, definitely gonna have to get back to the drawing board because Lances, I, I feel that I didn't need that many. Uh, there was a couple cards I didn't feel that I needed, especially during gameplay. I felt that monsters are really superior. I just, it's its a personal thing. I just feel that monsters are superior. I'm definitely going to have to do more playtesting. Maybe I'm not comfortable with uh, with having a little less monsters than normal. Uh, I do like double Megalo. That's just my, I, I just like double Megalo. I would never run anything more than two Megalo. And I think one Megalo kind of like, yeah, 
yeah, it kind of leaves you open. But other than that, thank you guys for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy.